All right, the view from the Monroe Street Bridge is probably the best view there is of this area. You do have that bridge under construction that blocks the view of the Upper Falls. And while well, I've got about a half hour before my parking runs out, I'm not sure I want to try to walk up that side to get over there where I can see it and then have to get all the way back over here to get to my car before, before the parking meter runs out. So I'm just going to settle for taking a shot from here. Likewise, I would take a better shot downstream, but the Monroe Street Bridge is not designed for jaywalking, and with four busy lanes of traffic going across it, I'm not about to try. So that's as much of a view of downstream as I'm going to get from here. I did get a decent view downstream. Come on, turn around, symbol gimbal. There we go. I did get a decent view downstream from the walkway over there I was standing on when I viewed the falls. And I was standing yeah, just about one layer down from where those people were stepping down to because I was right above the area of that fall, I believe. Probably about right where they are now where I was taking the picture. Because I was able to see the waterfall very clearly. See the way it came down into this pothole. I gotta say this pothole looks bigger from up here than it did from down looking at it from the side. And from the pothole it drains out and down to here. And you also have the side channels over here. And now that I've gotten a little shade from the sun, I can see better what I'm looking at. So I'll start with the falls again. As you can see the upper falls out in the distance. You can see the hydroelectric dam. We'll work down here where you can see the pothole on the left. And it looks like you can kind of see the trail on the right. As the water goes downstream, and the camera doesn't want to quite turn the way I want it to, but you can see the basalt everywhere out here that the water has to work its way out and around and through. Our book says this is a nip point, just a area with a steep drop caused by the resistant rock uh, basalt here. And eventually, if this falls, would decay its way back up and erode all the way back up to completely remove this area. The aquifer upstream of here that supplies water to Spokane and eastern Idaho would drop dramatically as this is an area that's keeping that aquifer full. So it's like a natural underwater dam that is keeping water in that area and storage underground that's available for the use in eastern Washington and the panhandle of Idaho. And someday it'll be gone. However, if man keeps putting up dams for hydroelectric power, that will extend the time that it takes for this to erode away and they may never uh, see it com collapse completely. Well, I can see uh, the crane over there is making a pick. I don't know why he's going up that high with his load. Uh, there's nothing up that high he could set it on except the Washington Water Power Building. But that may just be a standard safety procedure to take it up high so it can't swing as much before you rotate the crane to set it down where you want to put it. Yep, he's definitely rotating the load now. So you get to see a little of the construction in progress here.
Although right now all the activity is behind the building from me. And now I can see he's setting it down. And that's about all the more I'm going to see of that activity. So we'll just close this out with one last look at this beautiful area. And then I'm going to go look for the next beautiful area to check out here in Spokane. must have been something when the, uh, we consider this would have been under 500 feet of water during Glacial Lake Columbia or Glacial Lake Spokane, depending on ice dams creating the lakes at the various points. And that 500 feet was already full to the top of the hills when Glacial Lake Missoula failed its dam, reached its dam and come flooding in here. Until some of the very last floods, when Glacial Lake Columbia was gone, and the last flood actually came down through here without a Glacial Lake here in the way, and really had a chance to ravage the area. When you consider nearly the entire contents of the Glacial Lake flowed right through this area, that's a whole lot of water in one very small contained area. It no doubt over flooded just like the bigger floods did and put water over the tops and into every area it could until it finally finished finding places to flood to and worked its way around through the uh, Columbia River Valley across the scab lands as it overtopped areas through the Grand Coulee as it flooded into there and across all those areas until it finally got back to the Columbia River Valley and on out to the Pacific Ocean. But this is one area where those floods had a great chance to occasionally carve out an area when this area wasn't underwater from the glacial lake that would have been over top of it. Well, it missed most of the flood damage, but the flood did have a chance to get in here on occasion. Well, let's go find another area to check out. 